Okay, we're back. Um, doing a mechanics example, some circular motion. Uh, this is when we have to deal with um, net centripetal forces. And just want to do a couple of examples of the, the two types of circles that we have, horizontal circles and vertical circles. <coughs> so uh, this is basically, we, you know, we treat it like an F equals MA, which is, is technically what it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but uh, we, we do have one extra step. We, we always do the force diagram, of course. But the second part of the picture is to identify the center of the circle. And by doing those two things, we can basically see, literally see, how to set up the, the equation for centripetal force. We'll be looking for positive forces or anything that points towards the center of the circle. And negative forces or centrifugal forces is anything that points away from the center of the circle. So the, the most frequently asked um, cases for horizontal circles would be something like the swing ride at Great America and uh, a, a car going around these embanked curves, like a racetrack or something. So in the case of the swing ride, uh, our force diagram is fairly simple. You have gravity and you've got tension in the string. And that's basically it. Uh, we identify the center of the circle, which is over here at the center of the ride. So there we have our, our radius line. So now that let the picture do the talking for you. We can automatically write mv squared over r because we have some circular motion. And when we look at this, we see that the only thing pointing sideways towards the center we can only get something horizontal if we break up the tension and, and make a triangle. Where part of you, part of the tension is pulling up, part of the tension is pulling to the right. That's our centripetal force, that x component. That's the only thing that points along the radius. Okay, and if we think of our angles, uh, this would be our, our theta. Usually, it's with respect to the vertical. So that would be our tension force multiplied by the sine of that angle. The other part of tension uh, is balancing the weight, the gravity. So we could also write down tension cosine of the angle is equal to your weight. There's no vertical motion, so you, you have equilibrium vertically. You have an acceleration horizontally because there is a net force. There's a centripetal force that's changing your direction horizontally. Now for the, the car on the, the bank track, and you must love my picture, I'm sure. The center of the circle is over here somewhere. So here's a radius line. Okay. And our force diagram, and we, we can do this without friction even. Um, we have always gravity. Now notice that gravity is perpendicular to that horizontal line. So gravity cannot be part of our centripetal force. The only other force, if we ignore friction, it's an icy track or something like that, would be our normal force. Because the normal force makes an angle with uh, that horizontal line, that's the one we have to break up. So part of the normal force, we can draw sideways, part of the normal force is going up. Now, you can prove it to yourself, but this would be our angle up here. Uh, that's the angle of the hill. It's like doing our gravity triangle in a sense. So when we go ahead and set up mv squared over r, it's the x component of the normal force. Okay, so that's going to be our normal force multiplied by the sine of the angle of the hill. What's the other part of normal force doing? Well, if you're not moving up or down the hill, you have equilibrium. It's very similar to what we just did for the, the swing ride. So normal force times cosine, okay, that, that upward push, that's balancing gravity. Okay. Now, the, the only thing I'll say is if, if there were friction, we could, we could also do something with that. Now the tendency of a car, if you're going around a, a racetrack, is 
if you go too fast, you actually slide up the hill. You can watch a bunch of you know, NASCAR type skid outs and crashes and stuff on YouTube um, to see that that's, that's the motion, that the car wants to go in a straight line. So the tendency of friction is going to be downhill. Okay, so uh, notice too, the friction, because it's parallel to the hill, makes an angle with that horizontal line, with the radius line. So part of friction is going sideways, part of friction is going down. And if you do the geometry, we have our angle right there. So if, if there were friction for centripetal force, the x component would be the friction force multiplied by cosine, the angle of the hill. And notice that the, the other part of the y component of friction is pointing down with gravity. So we'd have to put that on the downside. Friction times the sine of the angle of the hill would add in there. Okay. That's what it would look like for, for these types of problems. Now we switch over to the, the vertical examples. Um, something like a swing or a pendulum, a loop-to-loop -loop on a roller coaster, you know, things like this. And let's see how that works. For the, the pendulum, we have a force diagonal that looks identical to the swing ride that we just did, but the difference is where the center of the circle is. The center is up here at the top of the, the string. Okay, So when we write centripetal force, notice we, we don't have a component of tension pointing that way, it's the total tension. Okay? No matter what the angle is as you swing, whatever your tension is, is pointing that way. Notice here too that the gravity we now have to be concerned with. Gravity makes an angle with the radius line, makes an angle with the string. So we can break up gravity relative to that radius. Uh, if, if we're measuring our angle with respect to the vertical, notice that mg cosine theta points away from the center. That's a true centrifugal force. The other part of gravity is tangent to the circle that you're swinging around. And so we call that tangential force. It causes a tangential acceleration. Okay, that, that's the part of, uh, that's the force responsible for making you speed up and slow down and making the pendulum swing. Last but not least, for a vertical example, is a loop to loop. Uh, notice for the, this, you know, if, if you're towards the bottom half, of the loop, let's say you're, you're moving upwards like that, um, your force diagram is, as always, is going to be gravity. You tend to ignore friction on these things, but you also have a normal force. Okay, so here's a case where the, the normal force points towards the center of the loop. Okay, that's the centripetal force. And you have part of gravity uh, pointing downward a away from the center. Okay, so if, if again, if we're measuring angles with respect to the vertical, like, like we tend to do, and we can break gravity up into two pieces, uh, we're going to have mg cosine theta in this case pointing away from the center of the circle. Okay, a centrifugal force. Whereas at the top, your force diagram is you have gravity and normal force pointing downward right towards the center. Okay, there's a case. Uh, I guess I'll just skip around here. Notice that no matter where you're in the circle, normal force is pointing towards the center. But for the top half, you actually add the contribution of gravity. If you're at the very highest point of the loop, all of your weight is pointing straight down, so that's part of your centripetal force. Okay, so here it, it's kind of weird because it, it, if you're on the top half, gravity is adding, it's the centripetal force. If you're on the bottom half, gravity is pointing away from the center and you can access a type of centrifugal force. So you have to be careful and, and understand like where you are on that path as you go around. So these are just a couple 
examples for each case, vertical and horizontal. Hopefully it helps. Hopefully you kind of see the difference and get the hang of how to set up mv squared over r. Let the picture help you. Okay. Mark it up, draw your vectors in, see what points towards the center. Okay. Life will be a lot easier for you, I guarantee it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope it helps, and until next time, we'll see you later.